Welcome to She Speaks Bravo. Listen, it's Southern Charm Day, specifically dog wedding episode day, and I am confused. I don't understand why everyone's mad at this episode. I feel like I missed something. I, I, I mean, oh, whatever. Okay, before we get into it, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. I'm covering Southern Charm, Beverly Hills, Atlanta, soon to be Salt Lake City and Potomac as well. If you're already subscribed, love you, mean it. Let's just get right into the recap after the intro. Okay. My name is Emily, and I have been watching Bravo TV as a form of self-care for over a decade. Needless to say, I'm a complete mess. Subscribe and follow along for painfully insightful recaps about Bravo, true crime, and other great TV. Hit that bell. Okay, so the Southern Charm episode. I don't know if you tuned in last week. I don't know if you stayed till the very end when I talked about how they did the like the tease for this episode was so serious. Like it was like a will it happen? I thought that was a little unnecessary. Like we didn't need to play that, do that much. So I wasn't looking forward to this episode. Like I was like, okay, we're gonna, we don't need to. I was worried. However, when I walk, maybe it's because I take notes on the episode. I think that does change things, you guys, as a, because when I went from being a viewer to a content creator and like a podcaster, it does, it does change how you watch the shows because I know I'm going to either create a post or recap it and like, you know, maybe reenact it a little bit. And so I kind of was all here for the camp of it all, because what happened last season with the conversation of race was an anomaly for this group. And if you really think about it, the only person willing to talk about it or the only like little section of the group was Vanita sorry, Leva with Vanita, the other Madison that runs Gwen's and Danny, but like they're gone. It's the only one left is Leva and Vanita, but Vanita's friends with Madison. Madison wasn't super into it and the guys ran from it. And it's not to say that they don't want to have the conversations. It's just that they don't. And that's where we're kind of left with like, this is a reality show. They, they don't, it's not a documentary where they just don't like whip out an iPhone and point and shoot. They have to keep it very stylized and on brand, but it is still reality. So we don't want them to stage these like phony scenes of them talking about race and having deep conversations that they wouldn't have because that's not what they would do. They're just not that deep. So we thought we were going to get more of that because it seemed like that was the direction we were headed, especially based on the reunion. And, and Shep is actually very outspoken on Twitter. Like I love when he went after Lindsey Graham. So the season starts and we get Vanita bringing up race and the way they chose to tell that story was they made it a focal point and clearly villainized, tried to villainize Olivia. Half the audience did not see Olivia that way though. Just so we're clear, because I can tell you from the feedback I got running my Instagram page and posting, it was a 50, 50 split on TikTok as well. 50 right down the middle. So I can't quite tell 
what they achieved because the network has final say in the in in the cut that we see. So it's like the network was like, okay, they liked that race conversation. And we got a little bit of that in the from Vanita and Olivia. So they really played that up. But then they were left with the rest of the footage, which didn't tie that up or they didn't have any more of that footage to kind of carry through the rest of the season. What they had was a dog wedding. So I get why we're like, hold on, now we're going to go to a dog wedding after that? It seems insensitive isn't necessarily the right word, but it that's the word I'm going to use. So whoever was like, I think the network was pandering personally. I think the network was like, oh, cool. They like that conversation. Let's use that. But that wasn't authentic to what this cast was doing. This cast is trash, which is why we like it. That's why we like Vanderpump Rules. We appreciate this. This is what reality television is. But Southern Charm is like classier trash. Because like Vanderpump Rules is trash. Let's face it. We got Jax and Brittany going to Hooters. We, you know, and they're just, they're trashier as we're Southern Charm. They're, they're dressed up. They're from the South. They are getting properly presented to be trash. So this dog wedding is kind of like the perfect thing to do for Southern Charm. And once I let myself get into it, I was like, you know, this kind of makes uh, total sense. So you get Vanita and Madison, who are clearly fine. They're doing just fine. Trying on outfits and looking gorgeous. It's like this was all very much eye candy. So much of this episode was like we got dog content, you know. Speaking of dog content, we have Shep and Whitney walking a dog on a pier or whatever you call that thing. And Patricia's, she's worried. She's worried that they'll never get married, which is, you already know how I feel about this. Okay. I mean, I know that this should be like these dogs, but Whitney says, yeah, every year Ford makes a new model and I don't blame them. Look, if you if if that is what you're attracted to, then if you are constantly wanting the new model, fine. If you have a fear of commitment, that's okay. Have one for as long as you need to have one. You're going to die alone and be disappointed in the life choices you've made that's your choice okay then there are people who are married and miserable it's like it's like why do we need to all follow that cookie cutter decision of getting married also patricia why are you so determined for him to get married you've been married multiple times and you couldn't fit the mold of didn't didn't she say one of her didn't she say Whitney's dad wanted her to be what did she say a corporate wife didn't she say that hmm. and Shep says that there's no divorce in his family now how toxic does that sound honey ooh ooh that sounds toxic can you imagine oh my god let's dig into that a little bit. Like, let's, <laughs> oh God, I'm sure there's a closet, a closeted gay man, at least one in that family. You know it. No divorce in the whole family. Oh my God. And so in Shep's head, he's like, I don't want to fail. Like, honestly, to me, Shep seems to be the most, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Well-adjusted, um, <laughs> sensible. He's making the most sense to me. God, what does that say about me? Yeah, I think we've established by now, if you're new here, um, don't take any advice from me. I have no idea 
what I'm doing. Okay. In case you couldn't tell. All right. I know nothing. All right. So yeah, just a good disclaimer now. Um, but here's the best part because right when Shep, right when I'm like, Shep's got it all figured out with this whole marriage thing. Whitney says to uh, Whitney goes, so wait, has Taylor not given you a timeline? And Shep goes, no, not at all. Which is incredible because that means Shep really, truly is not listening to Taylor at all. Ever. Like, wow. Okay. Uh, Jesus. Um, you know what I did miss, though, um, in terms of putting them in my notes? They have these great, um, the post- Post EP put these great chapters in with quotes. And so I don't know exactly where they come in, but I'm going to read. I know at least one of them's come up. And so, chapter one, the quote is an Oscar Wilde quote. And it's one should always be in love. That's the reason one should never marry. Great quote, which probably ties into that scene. And I, and I botched it by not saying it first. Um, and this may come in now because I think I got chapters three. Yeah. Okay. So this may come in now. Chapter two is men marry who also Oscar Wilde men marry because they are tired women because they are curious. Both are disappointed. Okay. Okay. So. Taylor, Olivia, now it's Friday. Taylor, Olivia, and Catherine go to lunch. And it turns out that Marcy, which I like this woman, she's smart. She realizes that Austin is pulling his usual tricks and she's got her own tricks up her sleeve. She sees how hot Olivia is. She's like, I know what to do. She sets up Olivia on a blind date for the wedding, which she knows Austin will be at. And this is, this right here is the perfect thing. Austin didn't even ask Olivia to go together to the dog wedding. So I think that's perfect because that's the thing about Austin. He's so noncommittal. So it's easy to pull these tricks on him and watch him squirm. It's, it's. Mm, mm. So meanwhile, Austin's FaceTiming his sister, Katie, who's, oh God, we love Katie, don't we? And, and he's like, you know, like, just, uh, you know, I don't know. Cause he has no idea this blind date's been set up. So he's still living in this world where Austin's Austin always feels like most, most fuck boys feel this way. They feel like they have the upper hand because they're the first ones to say, like, I want to take it slow. And that's a feeling of power. When you say that first, you feel like you've, you know, you've kept the woman down here. We're going to take it slow. Okay. We're going to just, just chill out. Okay. Relax. However, he says, he goes, I just want to have some, you know, I just want to have like fun. And Katie says, you can have fun, but make sure you don't make fun too messy. She has his number. She's like, listen, motherfucker. Um, Back at the girls' lunch, though, we find out Catherine is not invited. I kind of, I still do a bit forget why Patricia hates Catherine. I like, I know that they've gone through waves, but I just, I forget. I'm like, what happened again? I don't remember. Um, Craig and Paige have a cute little moment in bed. And she's talking about how he snores. And he's like, oh, man, does it keep you up? And she goes, no, I just put a pillow over your head. And then he makes a face and she goes, laugh. That was funny. Oh, it was a cute little moment. I, I just want to try to give them whatever I can give them because I don't want to appear like I'm biased, even though I probably am. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. So here, okay. So here's my, I'm pleading and arguing with everyone to give this dog wedding, like the flowers it deserves. Who doesn't want more cute dog content? Taylor and Shep are giving Craig a bath. Look at that face. I'm going to, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to, the, the face is up on the screen. Look at that face. 
look at that face. I mean, I'm going to look at it again. Look at that. I mean, you cannot tell me that that little fucking face isn't the cutest. Um, Olivia is getting ready to go and her dad comes in. Her dad. Oh, by the way, all the lines about Olivia's brother being a huge Coke dealer. I have heard that validated through multiple sources. So I am. Yes. Which means that the mom and dad are probably a little uh, they know how to party. OK, and I'm not saying they do drugs. I'm just saying like they're no they're not innocent. And so Olivia is talking to her dad about not going with Austin and going with someone else. And he's like, I'm telling you to play the field, honey. So we like that, dad. I thought that they were a little um, uptight and weird. And I'm realizing you guys just might know how to get down and um, you might need a little spinoff of these rowdy fuckers. OK, so back to this wedding. I'm, I'm pitching it, guys. Patricia is getting ready in this like she's got the beauty light set up in her boudoir and this little peaches, this little Pomeranian, and in comes Madison in this stunning dress. And it is just like a feast for the eyes. It's twinkly, it's pretty, it's girly. And as and she, she, Patricia says, I know it's silly, but people love weddings, they love dogs, and it's an excuse for a party. It is, damn it. Okay, so I'm done with the hating. All right. Olivia goes to Marcy's and meets Zach, and he's not my type. So he's and his outfit. I I would have walked in and been like, "What?" I also wanted to crawl out of my skin because I am so immature. Like I don't date. I don't like dating, and this would have just been my nightmare. I love, love, love. Um. Okay, so here's a. Here we go. Now with this, this dog wedding is just sort of meant to be an excuse to get the entire cast in one location and at one event. And in order to do that, I mean, I know we're missing Catherine, uh, but to, God, I hate to say this, but to be fair, she's she's such a huge force and she comes with so much she she's sort of like an energy vampire in a way because she's just like you can't ignore her presence um that it you allowed more of a dynamic to exist in a group as opposed to when she's there like throws a wrench in the whole thing um so we're gonna get pretty much all these storylines playing out in one setting and the backdrop is just this cute dog wedding that's ridiculous that looks like best in show meets southern charm Hello. So Shep and Taylor on the way and Taylor's like, should we give little Craig some marriage advice? And she reads some quote about like, you know, trust is something you build. And if you break it, you have to rebuild it. And Shep's like, oh, God, that sounds horrible. You do whatever you want, buddy. And I mean, whether it was really her response or not, or that was just editing. But Taylor literally is like, So, you know, we get to watch that. We get to watch Shep spell it out for her. Like, here you go. I have no desire to do this. And if you do get me to do this, I'm going to be miserable. Uh, okay, so then we get chapter three. Let me read that. Marriage is a wonderful institution. But who wants to live in an institution? Groucho Marx. These are great quotes. You guys, the work that goes into this. What the fuck do you it, imagine? This was another murder mystery. OK, come on now. And then we have Erica, the party planner, who's taking this perfectly serious. And she's got this very soft voice and she's giving the bartender clear instructions. Just very sweet. But talking about you're going to be passing the champagne. You're just going to keep doing that. And then Shep and Taylor arrive and and OK, I'm going to play this clip from Shep. Because it's. It's how I feel. It's this is my sentiment about weddings, and I know that. 
I know that some people will say that Shep is being a jerk about it, but he's spelling it out. And I, I got to say, he's not wrong. God, sorry. I'm not, re- I'm not prepared. Is this it? Okay, here we go. Oh man, I hate weddings. Every freaking girl has this syndrome that Disney freaking drilled into them. You know, the Cinderella, the Snow White, the, the Prince Charming and the, on the horse, and it's screwed up. Because there's no Prince Charmings, I guarantee you, the more perfect they seem, the more screwed up they are. I'm sorry, that's accurate. I know I hate on weddings, and I'm sure some of you out there listening are like, not all weddings are bad. There are absolutely exceptions. Like, for example, my um, my best friend of the longest, like my sister from another mister. I hate that phrase. I'm going to edit that out. That was gross. Um, but she got married. And I, I mean, I think I cried more than anyone else because I just knew what she'd been through. And I knew that this was different and there, there are exceptions to this, but when it's this fantasy and it's just, I just want to get married and you don't even have like when Brittany was marrying Jax, the producer at one point asked, cause she's talking about how she's always, when she was a little girl, she imagined getting married and blah, blah, blah. The producer says, who was the groom in these fantasies? And she's like, well, gosh, I never even thought of that. I was like, that doesn't make sense. Just throw a fucking party for yourself with the wedding, like throw a wedding. Just don't get married. Like it. So, okay. Sorry. I digress. Okay. Um, okay. So back to peaches, peaches, putting this like ridiculous little wedding dress on. And I can't tell what the bottle is. uh, There's like a little, like a little, um, stuffy that looks like a bottle of Vuv. And there's like a string of pearls and Patricia gives us some little backstory. She's like, I was married three times. And at one point, this bitch says she was in like a Park Avenue apartment married by a Supreme Court judge. Now you tell me why we don't like this episode. Okay. I bet you can't figure it out. Okay. You just wanted to make fun of a dog wedding. All right. Because it's low hanging fruit and it's easy, but I guarantee up until this point, you agree with everything I'm saying because it's this is gold. OK. Now we get Erica, the wedding planner, so like committed. She's walking Shep and Taylor through the process. And Shep is so com- Shep wants to get this right. When have we ever seen Shep this concerned with like following instructions? Never. We've never seen this side of Shep. He is so committed and he, he's like, walk down where Taylor's like the aisle, babe. He's like, okay. All right. And then Craig gets the zoomies. So we get to see Craig being like, mm, 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 like running around. I'm just confused guys. What it's the cutest thing. I'm obsessed. Okay. And now it's totally raining. Then we get Whitney doing a sound check. Cause Whitney is going to rock out. I cannot. Then Benito shows up with Charles, my other favorite dog. I cannot. Okay. Then Naomi shows up with this gorgeous hair. Benita, by the way, has this pink sequin dress with this pink fur and it's killing it. Leva's dress with the fur. Everyone looks amazing. The men look phenomenal. Austin arrives with a little top hat for little Craig. Great coat. Madison's dress is fucking hot. You better stop it right now. It's a feast for my eyes. I cannot like I I loved every second of this. And Austin, when Austin's watching Madison come down, he's like, I knew this was going to happen. I I knew when Shep asked me to be the best man, to be the best man, okay, <laughs> be the best man. <laughs> Ridiculous. I knew when Shep asked me to be the best man, I would have to be standing up there with Madison. And so then Erica, the wedding planner, is like, okay, so you're going to come down. You and Madison are going to walk down and you're going to stand at the altar. And Austin's like, it's my worst fucking nightmare. I'll tell you who has no time for this meltdown. That's Erica, the wedding planner. Erica has no time for that. She's like, it'll be real sweet, real precious. He's like, okay, great. 
Thank you. She goes, you're welcome. And just walk. She can't, she has no time. Okay. She Go tell that to someone else. And everyone walking in notices the pews, by the way, because it is so the little tiny pews that they're all going to sit in because there's an aisle and an altar for a t- I mean, you guys. So now first we have Austin spiraling about Madison and he's like, I'm going to have to stand at the altar. Now he turns to his left and in comes Olivia and Marcy and Olivia is with a date. And he's like to Taylor, he's like, who's that? And Taylor is so sweet. Like, she's just an angel. My God, she's like, she just needs another angel. She doesn't need Shep. We we get why she's with Shep. We get it. But like her next, we know who she's destined to be with. And she's destined to be with a nice, sweet, like angel man. And she's like, that's, um, that's Olivia's date. Austin's like, he's a, he's a handsome man. (laughs) Jesus. Oh God. I'm just, it couldn't make me happier. So then we get a chapter four. Let's see what that quote is. Chapter four is a man doesn't know what happiness is until he's married. By then it's too late. Frank Sinatra. Oh my God, this is my favorite part of the whole episode. Austin sees Whitney coming down. He's like, so wait, are we not going to get to see Peaches until it's time? Whitney goes, yeah, it's a proper wedding. <laughs> Duh. How could you, like, how can you even ask such a ridiculous question? Uh, so Olivia goes over to say hi to like Shep and Austin and Austin, whether it's editing or not, Austin, I don't even think Austin gets out like a formal, like a, like a, oh, hey, He's like, so who's your date? And she explains, oh, Marcy, Marcy set us up. And Shep goes, he seems pretty cool. And Austin's like, I, 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 I guess. And I just, I love that they have this amazing flashback of him on their date, telling her unprompted that he wants to go slow. Bro, you did that. Okay. That was you. She she even said, she's like, why are you already telling me you want to go slow? We're on our first date, dude. Like, thanks. Got it. Cool. Noted. So then Naomi, Madison, I think Benita's there too. They're, they're chatting. And Naomi asks Madison, like, what's, what's changed with you and Austin? Because like, you were fine at my house. And Madison says, well, I got engaged. And she's like, well, I mean, it's awkward, but, and then Naomi's like, well, yeah, I feel awkward around Craig. And this is where I want to kind of pause and do like a breakdown of what is happening. Cause I'm going to confess something. I've watched this episode three times. And on my first two watches, I was like, Naomi girl. Like when I watched that last scene, I was like, Naomi, you look crazy. And Craig should have balled you out. I totally did you guys. And I think I have to watch myself sometimes because I, if you're new here, you don't know this about me. If you're, if you've been around forever, Oh my God, if you've been around forever, I love you. Um, and I have a surprise coming up too, to tell you guys, I'm very excited about it. Um, Oh, I get to, I hate doing that. Should I, whatever. I, I will tell you guys very soon. I promise. I just want to make sure everything is done deal. Um, but it's especially exciting for anyone who's been following me for a while. And from like the very beginning, because you know, like you're the real ones that have known where this started and sorry, I digress. But if you're new here, God, if you're new here, um, I, I really try to be fair, even when it's someone I don't like. So sometimes in my quest to be fair, I'll, I'll try to almost like go against even the right side 
because I want to just be like, no, no, I can see where this person I don't like is coming from just to almost prove that I'm not being biased. And I have to watch that. Because I've definitely done that a few times. I did that during Salt Lake City with Lisa Barlow and my friend, um, my friend, Ashley, Ashley, if you're listening, she had to call me out. She was like, you're going down like a conspiracy theory hole. (laughs) I almost said conspiracy theory hole and uh, that's not right. So, okay. so here's the Naomi situation. I'm going to play a clip from Watch What Happens Live, and it it provided quite a bit um, of context. Um, Okay, hold on one second, please, because my phone is doing something weird. Just one second. Okay. Here's what she said on Watch What Happens Live. Why was it okay for you to totally refuse to hang out or speak to Craig while you were in a relationship, but now you roll your eyes and huff when Craig says he'll be doing the same out of respect for Paige? We got this a lot for you. Yeah, so uh, there's actually a lot that people didn't see behind the scenes. You know, Craig and I did have a friendship where he would call me and be like, oh, so it was so great to see you. You know, I'll see you at the next event. So I was like, okay, cool. And then we get to the next event and he would give me the cold shoulder. So it was really confusing. Um, But you don't see that, so... Do you think he was sending you mixed messages? Um, not, not in the, I mean, he's a great boyfriend to Paige. I don't think mixed signals like that. I think it was just, yes, we can have a friendship, so let's pursue that versus don't talk to me. Is it hard for you to see them together? No, it makes me happy for him, really. I, I like her. Um, I think that they're great together, so it's, it's good. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking happened. At her housewarming, not housewarming, her welcome back thing. Okay. Austin embarrasses the hell out of her and says things he shouldn't have said, but Craig knows was true. And so Craig probably felt bad and probably was trying to like make her feel less bad and sending her texts like, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're back in the group. Trying to probably do some damage control. Um, because she didn't need to feel like shit. Thanks, Austin. Um, then Paige and Craig have their conversation where he looks genuinely confused when she's like, no, you're not about to be friends. There's a difference between being cordial and going out and hanging out. He looks like he's like, wait, what? I oh no okay oh reassessing all the conversations we've had like whoops um yeah so I think that Naomi was clearly she she got the message at her house Craig she heard him loud and clear he's not interested that's that ship has sailed. But Craig was still being like, hey, we're cool. We can be friends. We can be friends. We can be friends. Then the thing with Catherine happened. Or I'm sorry, Caleb about Catherine. She thinks, oh, we've been texting. We've been cool. Catherine's not my friend. She's your friend. We can hang out, go get coffee, which is probably the conversations they'd been having instead of him being like, hold on. I know we've been cool and talking, but Paige just recently told me we are not able to do that. Instead, he's like, oh, I guess I'll just be weird and go to coffee with you and just treat you weird. Because that puts him in a position of power and in a position of being like, oh, my God, she's crazy. She's just like won't stop talking to me. And so she's like, no, if you want me to stop talking to you, I will. But you just sent me a text a couple of days ago being like, it was so great to see you. Let's hang out sometime as friends kind of a thing. This is coming out of nowhere for her. Basically, I'm now following where she's coming from. But because we're not seeing that private text situation, I'm. I was even thinking that she was being out of line. Like when 
they had coffee and stuff. I was like, yeah, Naomi, you're not supposed to be hanging out with him. Why would you think you're going to go hang out and all that shit? Now I'm, I'm putting it together. Now I'm getting it because he was acting like that was going to happen. Now his facial expressions and his reactions to Paige when she was like, no, make more sense. So when she says in her confessional, I probably look insane trying to be friends with Craig when he's with Paige, but I thought we were cool. Got it. I get it now. Okay. We'll get more into it, obviously, at the end. Um, So Paige and Craig walk up in her mini dress. Guys. Okay. So they also notice little pews. Anyway, so Naomi freaks out over Paige on having a jacket. And Craig is like, everyone, relax. I'm going to give Paige my jacket. But I'm sorry. Wouldn't you have already given her your jacket? You guys walked all the way from your house under an umbrella. Wouldn't you have already been like, here, let me give you my jacket? Was there no opportunity for her to run out to Gwen's and get a dress or a jacket? Was there truly no time at all? There's got to be a chance for that to happen. Gwen's is fabulous. I see shit all the time on their Instagram. This, This read to me like... The it's it, those girls that insist on going out in their cute, slutty outfits just because it's cute and slutty, no matter what the weather is. And the fact that Craig is like, relax, everybody. And then he's like, what's Naomi thinking? She is not respecting boundaries. Now he's just using jargon that he's not quite sure exactly how to use. Which is very Craig. Like he, he is a sociopath in that way. And he's like, he's kind of like um, a con artist. You know, he takes, he like takes on the persona of the person he's trying to manipulate or the person he's around. And so he heard Paige say boundaries. And now he's like, yeah, boundaries, Naomi. Meanwhile, he could have just communicated that like he's like, hey, I know I was trying to say we could be cool and all that, but it's making Paige uncomfortable. And so until maybe a little time has passed. But for now, I just want to respect Paige. You know, Naomi would have been like, oh, shit. okay, fair. Whatever, because she probably would have been like, yeah, Matul was uncomfortable with it as well. So. okay, Chapter five. Is, oops, sorry. Marriages are made in heaven, but so are thunder and lightning. Clint Eastwood. That's okay. Not my favorite. Um, all right. So now it's time to start the ceremony. Erica's handing out petals to toss at the end. And okay. So now everyone's lining up uh to go out and it starts to fully rain and madison notices that patricia has an umbrella and erica's like oh man why couldn't i have an umbrella also uh, erica said i couldn't have one and madison goes that's because she doesn't like you ha 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 and austin says in all seriousness why are you the way that you are and madison says you're the one being weird and he goes are you serious and she just goes mm-hmm. she just shrugs mm-hmm. I can't. And then tension builds because Whitney can't quite get his music together. He's like, oh, man, I was working earlier. And Erica's panicking. She's like, "Okay, as soon as Whitney starts, we can go out. And then he rocks. Okay, and Taylor says, I love it. This is what I want for my wedding. And there's just like a and you can just feel Shep's shoulders going. (sighs) Okay, so the pastor comes out from like the side, you know, like the, the back side and just goes to the, to the, you know, to the altar and this big chef panic and he starts freaking out and he's like, wait, the pastor didn't go down the middle. The pastor didn't go. Down. Are we supposed to be around the side? Panic, panicked. And then Taylor starts yelling at me. Have you ever been to a wedding before? He's like, I've never noticed where the pastor goes down. Okay. And I mean, 
Austin walks down, Madison walks down. I mean, this is a sincere ceremony. And I mean, little Craig, little Craig, and then Shep and Taylor sit down next to Craig and Paige and they're like, congratulations. And then Peaches comes out and they all stand up. But then Charles, that little hound dog, Charles, he jumps down and Peaches gets out of her leash. And Shep has to go and grab her and take her to the altar. And when Whitney's done, he makes his like, rock hands. He's like, fuck yeah. And then Shep's like, oh my God, where's Craig's top hat? Ah! And he like runs and gets the top hat. And then he like on his way back before that, though, Olivia notices that there's Austin up there just like standing next to Madison. And she goes, I do kind of feel bad for Austin. But, you know, I'm just going to have my fun with Jake. And they're like, the, it's Zach. And she's like, oh, my God, it is. It's Zach. Classic. And so, so Shep has to sit up there. Shep and these two big dudes are just sitting up there next to this little dog while there's a fucking ceremony with a Pomeranian. You, and the, the pastor says that we are uniting these two canines in holy matrimony. I can't. And then this makes stupid ass Craig. Oh, my God. It's so over the top. He's like, this totally makes me think about marrying Craig, marrying Paige in a human wedding. Oh, I always have this rom-com fantasy. It just this made my skin crawl. It was so over the top. I was like, we get it, Craig. You're going over the top now, right? Now it is the reception. And Olivia is having the time of her life on this date. She's talking to Marcy and Naomi about it. Uh, and meanwhile, Shep and Craig are talking about how dumb Austin is for not just locking it down with Olivia. And Craig, in his confessional, gives us complete revisionist history. It, when me and Paige were in in this same stage, we only did it for a few months and then we made it official. <laughs> no, no, no. And no, no, no. No. So Austin and Lever on the couch. And now uh, he's like, you know, Olivia brought a date. And he's like, I, I, I was going to make a move, but no, I'm not. And Lev is like, why not? He's like, why would I? Which is just Austin in a nutshell, you know? And so Madison and Vinny to walk over. And <laughs> Madison says, I got a bone to pick with you. And Austin's like, what could you possibly have to say to me? And he's like, everything you do is a subtle dig at me. And he's not wrong in her Amazon live announcement. She's one of the questions was, which I'm surprised I didn't do a flashback to. One of the questions was, um, have you heard from your, has your ex congratulated you clearly talking about Austin, but she said, the only ex I care about is my ex-husband. And so then Austin does the mocking of the, the only ex I care about is my ex-husband. <laughs> Madison's like, what? I couldn't understand you with your fake accent. And Austin's like, oh, that's what you sound like all the time. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can't hear you ever. <laughs> that's you every day of your life. I can't hear you. Okay. Okay. Wait, hold on. Here's a separate thing. Patricia comes in. Here's a soundbite. I would like to petition the court to remove from all of Bravo till the end of time. The soundbite of someone saying like, what's going on that there are altercations at a dog wedding or who needs to fight at a kid's birthday party? Any of those types of sound bites, eliminate them, please. Police. What is that? What am I saying? Fuck. What's the quote I'm thinking of? Da -da 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 -da. Police. It's a Danielle. Danielle from Jersey. Oh, my God. I'm. I speak Bravo. I do. What is it? Pay attention, please. Jesus Christ. That was scary. I'm going to have to rewatch Jersey now. So I get it back. Um, 
I just don't like this. We, we, we don't need it. Take it out of, take it out of the final cut. There, there's no need to do this unnecessary. What's going on that there, there's going to be an altercation at every event. If you're lucky. Okay. Hear me. Got it. Thanks. Um, but Patricia's like fully orchestrating the scene. She goes, Craig, have a seat. I think this is a conversation we need to break into. Naomi, come over here. And Naomi's so uncomfortable. <laughs> because Craig is physically making it as obvious as he can, which is incredible. But also. Like. The, OK, they're on a cast together. And so what does Paige expect? Like, does is Naomi truly not allowed to sit next to him? Because that is bizarre. Um, and so she sits kind of far back and Patricia's like, can we see you? You're so far back. And so she scoots forward and she goes, hey, Craig. And Craig is like looking, looking behind him at Paige. And it looks like. She shakes her head at him like, no, I can't tell if that's just editing and it was something else, but it, that's what it looked like. I even rewound it a few times. Um, but back to Austin and Madison, he's like, it's like you can't help it. And then you make it seem like it's my fault. Like, I thought you were bigger than that. Now, that is the definition of gaslighting, the exact definition of it. And then like too many people start joining the couch and Austin leaves and why were so many people joining the fucking couch like that's not normal like let these people have a conversation i would have got up too i was getting claustrophobic uh so naomi and whitney like scoot towards madison because now no one is sitting on the couch because the entertainment's gone and um this is a little thing to pay attention to naomi and whitney and Madison's like, how was it with Craig? And Naomi's like, um, not great. Uh, weird. And again, I don't exactly know what. Because at first glance, like I said, I was really trying to. Not seem biased and trying to be like, OK, I'm totally I see I see their point. But then I'm like, but how are they supposed to how is Naomi supposed to act? She's going to be at this event. Is she supposed to like stay 20 feet away from him? Um, so Leva goes over to Austin and she's like, are you OK? And Austin's like, I mean, I'm over two, man. Olivia's got a date. And Madison's here. And Paige, seeing this moment of utter desperation, she goes, you know, our girls in town. Ew. You guys, ew, I wouldn't do that to my friend. I wouldn't see a guy that my friend that I know my friend likes so much that she was like crying and upset over. I wouldn't see that and and be like, oh, hey, let me throw my friend at you at this moment who you're clearly just needing some distraction you're going to use and forget about. That is really toxic. And like really immature, bad move. Like, what are you fucking doing? Oh, my God. Really bad. Um, ew. Ew. And of course, now Craig is so whatever Paige wants. And he's like, yeah, she's sleeping on my couch. And all on board for that, too, which is so toxic. No. Um. Anyway, so Shep is like, so Austin, where should we go to dinner? And then Austin's like, I'm actually thinking I'm going to hang out with Sierra. And Austin's wasted at this point. Turns out they all were because the preview for next week, uh, Naomi is so hungover. Clearly, everyone was trashed. Um, but Austin is hammered. And Shep is like, this is a, not a great idea. Now, mind you, I know that none of them are really in a position to tell anybody what's a good or bad idea. But I'm just saying, like, if even they're saying it's a bad idea, it's a very bad idea. OK. Um, all right. Here comes the big one. 
So Naomi pulls Naomi goes over to Craig and says, can we talk? And so on Craig's way into the room, he says, oh, my God, you know, like I got to go talk to Naomi. And Madison's standing there and she's like, well, you know, the exes are always going to feel and Paige is like, like they missed out. And Madison says her loss. Right. And Paige says, my gain. <laughs> Sure, girl. Your gain. OK, hmm. girl. Uh, all right, moving on. So as they're walking into the room, this is, by the way, the same room that the now famous conversation, what's wrong with my sewing happened. Mind you, that's never. That's never an accident. I want to give a shout out to my producer friends because I know that that was intentional and I loved it. Um, but as they're walking into this room, Craig goes, if this is going to be serious, I'm going to walk away. And he looks back at Paige like uh, this is just this is Craig. Craig doesn't know how to manage human emotions properly with any sense of like maturity at all. And he says in his confessional, I'm balancing being respectful and kind, but pulling me aside at a group event. It's just weird. And maybe it is, but it's also a reality show and we need it on camera. So shut the fuck up. OK. And she's also been having conversations with you. We've come to find via text that aren't matching up with your behavior in public. So let's have both converse. Let's do that now. Let's have a conversation in public. So Craig's he sits down with such a so what's the problem? And she says, I feel like you're awkward around me. And he goes, it's a respect thing. You know, we're not just exes. We hooked up recently. And so she said, now, when I first watched this, you guys, I kind of understood why he got pissed because I didn't know what she was referring to. So she says, I feel like when you and I are around each other, Sometimes you act a certain way and then other times and then Craig interrupts and says, Naomi, if you're trying to insinuate that I act different around you, when well, my girlfriend is here than when I'm not. And Naomi's like, no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. He's like, OK, that's what it's sounding like. And she says, can you listen to me? He says, OK, then say it correctly. OK. OK. OK, this is very like you can speak now, child. It's got that's got that energy. But I'm sorry, you guys, I, I'm, I'm confessing. These, I'm confessing my sins, my sinful thoughts. The first two times, two times I watched this, I was like, she better say it correctly. I did. But this is the power of editing and perception when you don't have the full story. It must be so annoying to be on these shows. And to know what really happened and to deal with this shit. It must be so annoying. So then Naomi says, the only thing I was trying to ask you, if I make you uncomfortable in the way that you made me uncomfortable when I was dating Matul. Right there, I'm like, oh, don't say Matul. Don't say Matul. Because unfortunately, when it comes to Matul, Craig, Craig, in his mind, Craig was right. And Craig has rewrote history to be that Naomi left, left him for Matul. That is not what happened. Naomi left Craig because Craig. Okay. So I think people forget why they broke up. Craig would not stop staying up till like four or five in the morning and sleeping till the late afternoon. And sometimes when you, are partying like that with someone it's sexy for a minute it's fun for a minute but then it gets really dark and she wanted him to stop doing that and start living a healthier more productive life and craig was not being was not willing to do that and when she'd ask him to be that person and he what he was doing was he would like fudge the truth a little bit like when she'd ask what he did like she was in school um, and so when she'd ask, like, oh, what'd you do? He would 
not be totally honest and say like, oh, yeah, like he would lie about what time he woke up and how late he stayed out and stuff like that. And she'd catch him and stuff like that all the time. And so um, that gets frustrating and difficult, especially when you know that person has so much potential and it's such a small, stupid thing, like just fix that. But it is it's something it's dark. It's a dark thing because he was doing so much Adderall and Coke, I'm sure. Um, so you finally have to make a choice. Like, I just need to, like, you won't stop doing that. And that's what I need. I need those things to change and you won't change those things. And so every time she tries to say that to him while they're breaking up, he talks over her and, and just says, that's not the reason. That's not the reason. It's something else. It's something else. So he never absorbed that that was the reason. And so when she started dating Matul, he rewrote the reasons she gave him to be that it was because of Matul. She wanted to be with Matul. So when she says Matul, he gets to say in his mind, it's like, well, you left me for Matul. And unfortunately, Matul ended up being a bad guy. And this is evil, what he says to her right here. She says, because when I was dating Matul, I thought I wasn't allowed to interact. He cuts her off and he says, because you were dating someone that was controlling as fuck. And she says, right. So that's what I'm trying to say. When I was in your position, oh, he goes, no, you were never in my position. You left a loving relationship. Do we? I will pull so much footage to discredit that because that's gaslighting. Just being told you're in a loving relationship when they are saying abusive things, that's gaslighting. Because I will like to be with a control. See, you left a loving relationship to be with a controlling asshole. That's not what happened. Who cheated on you? Wow. In that meantime, your boyfriend who loved you moved on. He's been waiting to say this. So you can never compare the situation I'm in with a loving girlfriend with the position you were in. So what would you like to say? Because honestly, Naomi, you don't affect my life anymore. You just don't. He leaves. He gets Paige and she walks out like, that's right, bitch. I won. And Naomi clearly looks at producers, whoever was in the room with her, like, what the fuck just happened? And next week we get what looks to be a great trip, the all brass trip. I think I'm saying that right. And um, so we're going to get Naomi telling Olivia that Austin hung out with Sierra, which is going to piss off Olivia, it looks like. And Austin telling Craig that Naomi hooked up with a Whitney and Shep is yelling at the group at one point and Craig is yelling at the group at one point and it looks great to me. Um, so in the preview for next week, that's been released what uh, Naomi is going to tell Leva and Austin happens to call Leva and hears the story at the same time that, that, uh, <laughs> that Naomi and Whitney made out and he spent the night. I don't know if they had sex. I can't tell that's what she's saying, but uh, yeah, they're not together anymore, but yeah, it's a very odd pairing. Um, but from what I've been hearing from the people that were around it, it's, it actually ends up like making sense, but Craig is not going to take it too well. And here's, here's what I think. Okay. So he's leaving this conversation that he had thinking he has so much power. He's like, that's right. I left Naomi jaw open on the floor like sad little does he know that's not what was happening and he's going to be shocked to find out that she's not pining over him and you know whatever so Tell me again why this was a bad episode, because I don't understand. Thought it was fantastic. We got so many storylines. We got so many dynamics, moving parts, and we got dog content. I loved it. I loved it. 
Um, also, a note on the Facebook group. Um, I'm limiting that to people who've been following or listening for at least three months. And let me explain why. When you first find me, find my Instagram, my TikTok or my podcast or my YouTube channel. It's so fun when you're like, oh, my God, this chick is saying everything I agree with. I love it. I love it. It's bound to happen. That eventually I say something you don't agree with and it's like, give it some time, give it about three months. And if in that time span, you're like, OK, maybe she said a few things I don't agree with and you're still cool with me. We're good. But the Facebook group is really my like safe place to connect with the people that I know are like minded and aren't going to attack me for opinions, because that's what Instagram and TikTok is for. I get enough of that. So if you've applied or whatever the term is and I've denied it and I forgot to I, I'm still learning how to do the admin stuff on there. And if I haven't explained why. It's because you said you've been only been following me for a little bit. And that's why, like, I just want to keep keep that space very protected so that I can I know when I go into that into that group, it's going to just stay like people who are not going to ball me out for an opinion Um, because I get enough of that on social media. So, yeah, Um, that's it, guys. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me. If you are not subscribed already, if this hasn't convinced you, my God, what else do you want? Just kidding. Um, Please rate and review. That helps me so, so much. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. (laughs) 